for the Tuesday, August 13, 2019 Select Board meeting. I'm calling to order. We'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Thank you, and good evening, everybody. Yep. All right, so we started the, uh, the meeting tonight at 6 o'clock with executive session. Um, call to order, Pledge of Allegiance. So now we're going to go to the, uh, the public forum. What I need to remind anybody <coughs> coming up for the public forum, you have two minutes, and it's not going to be a back and forth. So come up, say what you have to say. You get two minutes. I'm going to stop you after two minutes, and there's no back and forth. All right? So if anyone has anything to say. That looks like way more than two minutes. <laughs> that's true. That does not look like two minutes of material. Well, I'm been involved in the plan a very long time. My name is Jackie Ponzoni, 12 Wood Street. I know you're voting on the Main Street card or Wood Street extension tonight, I believe. That's not correct. Yeah. That's not happening. That's not on here so tonight? Mr. Kamala, we prefer not to have dialogue back and forth because we're not posted for this agenda item. So that's well, I just want to say a few things because I have <clears throat> been very busy since town meeting. I received a letter of donation from my property at town before town meeting for the plan mm -hmm. for the car plan, which we weren't supposed to be on. Um, and I did file a complaint with the attorney general and all of the elected officials except President Trump. The governor's office sent my complaint to the Mass DOT, and so did the attorney general's office. My biggest concern is my Freedom of Information Act. Because when I received my Freedom of Information Act request with the Google Docs, thank you very much for all the docs and the information, there was a very important inf bit of information that wasn't included in that. And that was the Mass DOT Design Review Comment and Resolution Form. That, that form was dated July 10th, 2017. That was actually when the Wood Street extension was suggested to be added onto the plan. Okay? So the issue I have is our meeting, Norman, with you and Elaine and Dave and John was September 17th of 17. So you already had this in hand when you had the meeting with me and my neighbors, and I was told we weren't on the plan. So from, seven, so from September of 17 to the public meeting we had at the Senior Center in 18, January of 18, we weren't on the plan. We weren't on the map in January. But that suggestion was made by DOT, and I did get this from DOT when I had a meeting in my driveway with DOT. August 5th, DOT, David Shedd, and Jerry Doherty came to, my pro came to our property. I had a group of concerned citizens there that met with DOT because they're very upset over the fact they're losing their property rights. And this information was given to me by DOT, and it wasn't supplied to me by the town. All right, that is when it was suggested, before our meeting, before the public hearing. Nothing was ever told to me that that was on the table. That's a big concern I have. Jackie, um, so we're at the two minutes. Um, I would suggest that you talk to Norman. I don't want to have a Norman alone. With, I don't want to have a meeting alone with Norman. I want a board of selectmen member present because of the last meeting I was lied to. So if you could arrange a board of selectmen member to be at that meeting, I will agree to it. But I will not to agree to another meeting with Norman unless there's a board of selectmen member present because Norman looked me in the eye and told me nothing was changing in front of my house, Brendan. Okay. He, he stood there, he assured me, he brought a big map, and he told me nothing was changing. Okay. So I need well, we to get, have- We'll make sure that that gets facilitated. Whether it's me or somebody else, or, me. or John or whomever, we'll make sure that that happens. That's not a problem. I'm busy. I'm still busy doing my homework. And a lot of people are not happy with the losing property rights. And the Board of Selectmen has to look at how it's affecting the public. Anyone else? Hearing none. Uh, so now, nope. oh, I'm sorry. 
Heather? I have, I have belated news, so I couldn't make it on the agenda, but I wanted to share. Okay. All right. Um, good evening. Good Thanks evening. For, for, I will try to keep it to two minutes. Um, I'm always happy to be here to bring you more exciting news from the library, and, and this evening's no different. Um, as you know, we've experienced significant increases in both use and demand since our renovation. Um, and we regularly hear that residents want more opportunities to use the library, especially evenings and weekends. Um, you may recall that in FY19, we received an increase in appropriation that, among other things, enabled us to be open on Saturdays in the summer for the first time. So that first summer, since mid-July when we were open, we had 1,500 people, an average of 214 people a day coming into the library on the Saturdays that we were open. This year, we've been open on Saturdays since June. And so far this summer, we've had more than 2,800 people, which is nearly 260 people every Saturday coming in to use the library. So evidently, if we're open, they will come. And therefore, I'm very pleased to be here tonight to announce that we will be open expanded evening hours beginning this fall. As of Monday, September 9th, we'll be adding eight hours to the library schedule. Um, we'll continue to open at 10 a.m., six days per week, Monday through Saturday, and we will remain open until 9 o'clock Monday through Thursday. We will close at 6 on Fridays and 4 on Saturdays. So we're very excited. We've got a lot of positive comments from the residents since this was announced, and we are continually grateful to the town for the increase in appropriation that enables us to provide this increase in service. Thank you very much, Heather. You're welcome. Thank you. you. I made it under two. Great. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Great. Okay, do we have anybody else? So I, as the chair, have something to bring up. Uh, August 4th, there was a um, charity event for the, um, keep smiling for Abby, um, charity <coughs> at Teamworks in Northborough. There was a field hockey game, if I'm not mistaken, that was going on, uh, something that's been going on for a few years. Um, there was a, person that was pretty prominent in, uh, in Hopkinton over the last 20 years or so that was there playing that went down with a heart attack and became a systole. He had no heartbeat. Uh, he was out. He was dead. Uh, fortunately for everybody involved, <coughs> our fire chief, Steve Slammon, was there and he, uh, he jumped to action and, uh, with Scott Jurassic and the CPR on this person. They got a defib and uh, brought this person back to life. So anybody who knows Chief Slammon like I do, uh, it's not a surprise that he would jump into action and do something like this. Um, it's one of the reasons that I consider him a, a great friend and I'm proud to have him as a friend and very proud to have him as a fire chief. Uh, he saved the life not just of anybody but just of another Hopkins resident. So. I know, uh, I saw him getting a haircut today, I told him I was going to say this, he was pretty adamant against it, <laughs> uh, but as is the trend over the last 50 years of my life, I did not listen to him, and uh, I wanted to, to go ahead and, and, uh, and make a um, kind of notation, let the public know that, you know, we have people in the public that go out and they do great things all the time, and they don't do it for credit, and it wasn't in the newspaper, it wasn't in the independent, it wasn't anywhere. Uh, he just did it, and it was part of his job. And um, from the bottom of my heart, I'm very proud to call him a great friend. He's a great person. And, uh, and uh, so I'd like to just kind of give Chief Slammon his recognition for that. <laughs> That's the last nice thing I'm going to say about him for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now I believe, uh, Mr. Kamalo, I believe we have Lisa Whitmore. Um, that's going to give us an LNG update. Good evening, Lisa. Good evening. Tough act uh, to follow. Huh? Tough act to follow. Yeah, I know. It's the Board of Health. Anyway, Lisa Woodamore, Chair of the Board of Health. I'm here to report in the Board of Health conversations that we've had about Eversource and the LNG issue. Uh, I just want to say thank you for having us here tonight. We've discussed this at several meetings. Uh, as you know, the Board of Health requested from the state a health impact assessment, and we were denied that because the Eversource plant is not considered a new facility, and they only will do a health impact assessment for a new facility. So I think really what I'm here to say tonight very briefly is we are monitoring this. 
We are concerned about the lack of information that we have been given about any potential health risks from Eversource and from the plant. We also are very supportive of the Futures Act that Governor Baker has put forward. Um, and we um, really would like, which would allow for a comprehensive health risk assessment, impact assessment to take place. We believe that this should take place. But until the state, or the Commonwealth, or someone allows that, we feel as though we are operating without sufficient information to really monitor the health of the residents of Hopkinton as it relates to um, the Eversource plant. We will continue to partner with everyone uh, around this issue. Our health director has been very involved with Norman and with Fire Chief and others around this. We also did hear from a physician in Western Massachusetts who has spearheaded an effort in Massachusetts to uh, talk about the health risks of natural gas and natural gas exposure. And over 100 communities across the Commonwealth have signed on to send a letter to the governor to express their concern about those health risks. So that's, it's an update basically saying, just as probably you want more information, we really feel as though we need more information in order to adequately monitor this. Excellent. Board members, any questions? Lisa, did you folks put in writing to the town manager's office or to the chair, anyone that you're requested information and you're not satisfied with what you received? Uh, no, we have not, but we can. Yeah, I would encourage we'll you to put that in writing that. and date it you know, whenever you write it, but let's get, get on record that we're not satisfied, and I would copy uh, town council Ray Mary's and any correspondence you have specific to that issue. So town council and the town manager attended the Board of Health meeting, not last night, but the prior one, and we discussed it. It is in the minutes, um, but we will get a memo in writing as yeah, well. Yeah, a formal letter would be sure. great. Sure, absolutely. Thanks. All right, thanks, Lisa. Thanks. Appreciate it. You're right. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. Marion has a hand up. If I could just quickly say, um, LNG appears before the planning board all the time. You're Kramer, 39 North Street, chairman of the planning board. If people would copy the planning board too, we'll take everything into consideration. Duly noted, Mrs. Kramer. Thank you. All right. Uh, John Neese is going to talk to us about the Senior Means text, uh, Tested Tax Relief Program. And Mr. O'Connell. I'm his attorney. All right. <laughs> you are not recognized. Good evening. Good evening. So, Chapter 234 of the Acts of 2018 that was approved on August 22nd, 2018 by the Massachusetts Senate and the House of Representatives was an act authorizing the town of Hopkinton to establish a means-tested senior citizen property tax exemption. This is the first year of the program in Hopkinton and it's available <coughs> to residents who qualify for the state circuit breaker tax relief program. When the program was first introduced, we prepared a new uh, senior solutions guidebook with the information. We put the information on the assessor's webpage and the senior center webpage. We did a presentation at the senior center. We made the application available in hard copy uh, in our office and at the senior center, made the application available online and put the information on the TV screen in the town hall entrance. Uh, quickly, the criteria for the program includes um, age 65 or older with any co-owner at least 60 years of age. You need to be a resident of Hopkinton for 10 consecutive years. Uh, income is not to exceed 58000 for a single person, 73000 for a head of household, and 88000 for a married couple. The assessed value of the residence not to exceed 778000 and assets not including the residents not to exceed 250000 The tax exemption will be within the range of $550 to $2,200 per person at the discretion of the select board. We will return after the application period is closed to let you know how many people have been approved and to provide the information to you on your options and what the impact of those options will mean to the taxpayers who do not receive the benefit. We are here tonight because the Department of Revenue publishes a report that lists the number of filers who claim the circuit breaker credit. For Hopkinton, for tax year 2017, 
That was 246 persons who therefore might be eligible for the new means-tested property tax exemption. The deadline to submit the application is August 31st, and to date we have only received three applications, and we are trying to reach out in every possible way to spread the word about this exemption opportunity. I'd like to thank our CFO because in addition to tonight, to tonight's presentation and while I was at UMass teaching last week, he reposted the notice on the town website and the town hall message board and put out reminders on social media and sent press releases to electronic and print media. And we thank you for the opportunity to share the word tonight on this new program. Thanks, have we put some of these uh, reminders at the Senior Center? We have. The whole book. We have done all of that. Okay. We're, you know, pre applications, very low number. I mean, 246 possibilities. So, again, we're trying to just reach out to people who might be eligible to encourage them to apply. Okay. We know the number of exemptions, but we don't know who they are. Okay. So, we're trying to reach them in every way we yep. can. All right. Well, you can lead a horse to water. Uh, board members, any questions? Yeah, I was asked a question today at the senior center. was, uh, you must be a real estate owner to apply. Some renting people were asking. Uh, you it's it's a property tax tested. exemption, so property tenants are exemption. not, yes. can't avail themselves of it. Okay. I have a, I have a quick one. Um, yeah, because seniors, I noticed it, that, that uh, nine out of 10 things that you mentioned were on social media and not too many seniors may be on social media if there's so if there's a you know mailing campaign or something we can do and the other thing is when you were talking about the um the the uh, the, the uh guidebook is there a um an abridged version cliff is, notes is that one that that's about an inch and three eighths this this was prepared with information on every exemption that is available for uh, veterans, elderly, blind, CPA, circuit breaker, oh, okay. everything. Um, but this guidebook is actually available in print at the senior center and is online as well at the senior center uh, webpage and our webpage. Thank you very much. Good. Yes, sir, friend. Um, you mentioned that uh, the exemption would be five hundred dollars. Is that per person in the household or? You need to uh, have applied for and uh, been approved for the circuit breaker. The circuit breaker last year was eleven $1 hundred dollars. Under the the um, legislation that was approved, the select board has the option to use anywhere from fifty percent to two hundred percent of that amount. So five hundred and fifty dollars at the fifty percent level, anywhere within that range, up to two hundred percent or twenty two hundred dollars. So that will be your decision at a uh, future presentation in September or October once we know how many applications have been received and what kind of an impact it will have because it is um, a shift within the residential class. Mm -hmm. yep. Excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Moving on. Chief Lee, why don't you come up and introduce Tyler Brabham to us? Is that how you pronounce it? Brabham? Getting younger, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening. Thank you. I'd like to present to you uh, Tyler Brabham for your consideration for appointment for a uh, police officer. Um, I'll get this out of the way, Mr. Rock, because I usually like uh, you'd like to find out how this position came about. This was uh, we were able to add to the police department and this year's uh, budget. Uh, to create a detective sergeant spot, and Tyler will be backfilling through the uh, patrol force. Uh, we had several applicants for the position. Uh, I just want to thank a few few people involved that helped out in both first and second round interviews. Uh, Scott Van Ralton, uh, Phil Powers, Kristen Merrill, um, myself, and uh, uh, Lieutenant Porter, and Deputy Chief Bennett, who did the final uh, interviews. Um, Tyler rose to, to the top and uh, did an outstanding job for a, for a young man, but we're glad to have him aboard if you uh, wish to appoint. He grew up in the town of Blackstone, Mass. There he lived with his mother and father, Craig, and Michelle. 
I happened to uh, know with Dad. I had the opportunity to work with him in the Woonsocket Police Department many years ago, and he left us for the Mass State Police, where he's a sergeant in the K-9 unit. And uh, if he's half as good as uh, his dad, he'll be a great cop. He has two brothers, Kyle and Zach. Tyler attended Blackstone Millville Regional High School. On the top of his studies, he was the class treasurer and was part of the soccer, basketball, and tennis team. He also received the Joseph Struzik Student Athlete Award, which recognized him for outstanding performance, athletics, as well as the classroom. In 2015, Tyler attended the Fitchburg State University and joined the 4 Plus 1 program. This program includes a bachelor's degree while building a municipal police academy status uh, and obtained uh, academy certification, which started May of 2019. Uh, as he continues on, he will immediately begin a master's uh, program. During his undergrad, he played soccer for the university and served as captain for his junior and senior year. The team was part uh, of a team impact of a uh, national profit that connects children facing serious and chronic illnesses with local college athletes. He was also a member of the Student Athletic Advisory Committee. The group is advocating for giving back to the community, enhancing the experience of athletes part of the NCAA. Uh, my pleasure to introduce Tyler Brown. Thank you. Awesome, thanks. How are you doing, Tyler? Doing great, thank you for having me. Thank you. Thanks for showing up. Um, to tell us a little bit about yourself, stuff that the chief didn't. Sure. Um, so, like you said, I'm part of the um, 4 plus 1 program at Pittsburgh State. Um, it's a unique, pro unique program. Um, there's only nine of us, so we get plenty of training and attention for Police Academy. Um, this September, I'll be going with my master's, um, which will take about a year and a half. A year and a half. Um, yeah, I mean, I just want to give back to the community. This place seems amazing. Everyone I've met here is, seems fantastic. Um, starting with the police officers, for one, and two, just the workers around in the community. I mean, everyone's been so helpful, especially HR and stuff with all the paperwork and, you know, things that I had to comprehend. So, yeah, everyone's been amazing. So, thank you for having me tonight. Thanks. Thanks. Board members, any questions for Mr. Bradham? Don't really. Okay. Glad to I think you made a smart decision getting as far away from one socket as you could. <laughs> uh, and we're uh, we're very glad uh, the fact that you can uh, that you made it through the screening process and you're the one that came to the top. Uh, so I think that speaks volumes. Um, I have a friend whose uh, whose kid is going through that four plus one program right now, starting it in the fall. Awesome. It's a great program. It really is. It really is. So, uh, Mr. Catino, I will accept a motion if you'd like to make one. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to appoint Tyler Brabham as the as a police officer for the town of Hopkinton. Second that. Okay. Any further questions? Discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Abstentions? And it passes. Thank you. Welcome aboard. Thank you so much. I'm ready. Skills I don't want to get beat that bad, though. Oh, great. Congratulations. Thank you so much. That's the widest scenario, right? Why don't you all Okay. Yeah. I see Greg. I see Greg. Good to see you, sir. How are things going? Good. She's amazing. Great. Well, I've seen a lot of love out there. Uh, Mr. Hur and, and, and the deputy, there you go, there you go, you have to come over. Sergeant, don't hide behind you. No. That's it, right there, right there. Everybody looks great. This gentleman's uh, not showing his face that well. Chief, can you move that way a little? No? Perfect. Everything. Everybody looks great. All right, show me the love, people. 
Show me the, turn the camera on. Oh, there it is. One more time. Now this time with some smiles, people. Alright. Some angry, I'm seeing some angry faces. I see we get some less angry faces. I'm sure this is helping a lot. Thank you very much. That's one of our. No. That's one of our uh, fun things to do. It's one of the things that we like to do here. Um, so moving on, uh, we have some proclamations. Uh, this is the highlight of the select board meetings, including tonight. We're recognizing Girl Scout Gold Awards and Eagle Scout rankings. Uh, let me invite Girl Scouts Emma Bograd and Mallory Pishoff from Troop uh, 72233 who have received Girl Scout Gold Awards. Please introduce yourselves and the project you worked on. Let us start with Emma. How you doing, girls? Good, hey. Hi. Welcome. Hello. Oh, you can, I can hear you, thank you. All right. Um, I'm Emma Bogan, um, and my project was titled um, Dog Park Education for People. Um, the project stemmed from having my own dog suffer from, from fear aggression from her foster home not socializing her well. Um, and that importance of socialization in making sure that dogs can interact well for both the benefit of the dog and the benefit for the owners and the benefit of the, the town who may not know about this. Um, so with Hopkinton Parks and Rec uh, working on a, the dog park project, I have worked to find, gather information um, spanning nine different dog parks, uh, surveying 100 people, both about how much they know about how to keep their dogs safe in the dog park, so socialization of dogs in the dog park, and how often it's used, and how many people and dogs they usually see on a typical basis. Um, on top of that, I've worked on gathering information about the rules and regulations for, for the dog park um, in order to present a set of rules and regulations for our hopefully future dog park um, to make sure that everything is safe and that the rules are, are in line with what some of the dog parks are in the area, but also in line with how to make sure that ours is our own, but still safe, and um, yeah. so after that, I also worked on creating a class. So this class was on safety for the dog park, so that people can socialize their dogs there safely, so that they don't have to develop any fear aggression. They aren't just left at home, which um, and so this class goes over a lot of things. Um, regarding how to notice the signs of aggression, fear, and that whole spectrum, um, as well as what to do in a situation if something like a dog fight were to occur, um, how to safely handle that where owners won't get hurt and dogs won't get hurt. Um, I did do one class in person, um, but as since the dog park has not officially been built or anything, um, it has become a completely online class with a website that is accessible to anyone. Um, yeah, so uh, it's socializing your dog is a very important thing, and as someone with a dog that can't interact with with other dogs, it's it's something I find very important personally. Um, because it's, it limits her uh, quality of life and it puts a lot of pressure on us as well and I want to make sure that the town of Hopkinton can 
experience the full um, lengths of what, what it should be to be a dog owner in the community. Awesome. Awesome. Congratulations. Board members, anything for Emma? So Emma, we're working on it here in town, but, but you used other dog parks and got information elsewhere to kind of pull it together for us as we go forward, right? I think that's great. I mean, just the way you described it and the, and the thought that's gone into your project uh, is obvious. Uh, you spent a lot of time thinking about it. It's a lot of time working on it. And uh, it's a great uh, uh, concept and it's a great thing for us all to understand. And uh, the fact that you got it doing your gold star, I mean, that's, that's huge. It's, we say it all the time with the various kids that come in and young adults that come in. You're going to carry this award with you for the rest of your life, which is the coolest thing about it, that, and you're going to do something that you obviously love or you're doing something you obviously love. So good for you and, and well done. Thanks. Awesome. Just, I, I love dog parks. I, I've done a lot of uh, the, it's the Medway dog park in particular, and then a couple of the main uh, worked on them, and I think that they're a real asset to a community. So I thank you for your work. Yeah, do you know? Yeah, I just, uh, I, you know, it, we have such a great town. You know, I can't believe how many Eagle Scouts we get in the back there. You know, it just seems like uh, um, several times during the summer, a few times during the, during the year, we're going to uh, the, the, going to another circle, and and to see the, the, the same thing with the with the uh, Gold Stars. You know, it's really it, it's as as was mentioned by the chair before, or, or to, to, uh, Mr. Her. You know, this is something that you get to have in your resume and people look at it it will be 30 years from now and somebody will notice the gold star and somebody will notice the um the eagle scout because and, and and it's because you showed the the um initiative to do something special at this age people will know that you that that you're you're worth counting on when it comes down to a next job so congratulations mr nasrullah so I think it's incredible that, uh, that you took the initiative. I'm seeing a lot more uh, dog parks in surrounding communities, and uh, I don't think anyone's really addressed some of these issues that you brought up. And I think that's, uh, that's forward thinking, and I think that's something that, as everyone here has said, everyone, this is, people are gonna recognize this, that you had that ability at this age, and you took the initiative, and you, you came up with a solution. And that's, that's what life's all about, is finding <laughs> what needs to be fixed and fixing it. Uh, quick question, when, where did you hold the, um, the class? Uh, the Faith Community Church. Yeah. Excellent. That's fabulous. I mean, I think um, these kind of courses would be wonderful, and maybe even having some literature that could be distributed at dog parks, because uh, there's a lot of them coming on board, and a lot of dog owners would <laughs> be nice to have, uh, have some rules and, and understanding. I think it's fabulous. Congratulations. Thank you. Awesome. All right, Mallory, why don't you tell us a little something about what you did? Um, well, the, a big part of my project was trying to integrate different parts of the community through something that can be shared. And with mine, I chose to try and integrate different aspects of music, including bringing members of the Golden Pond community to be able to come to the Hopkinton High School Pops concert in the spring, which is something that allows them to both be able to go out into the community, meet new people, and be exposed to what different things are happening with the music association and the stuff coming out of the high school in that degree. And I did a lot, including organizing different aspects of the thing, of the, thing, of the concert, including the arranged seating that they do for that specific concert, including reserving seats, allowing ease of access for those coming from Bone Pond to be able to enter early be seated before crowds come in, transportation from the facility, to and from the facility, and being recognized by the concert and the community in, throughout the show. Good. All right, board members. <coughs> so uh, we don't see a lot of kindness and leadership brought together in our world these days for whatever reason. Uh, I have my opinions on that, but I won't share them here. I appreciate um, that. But when you bring <laughs> kindness and leadership together, I think you can move mountains. So that's really cool what you did, and I think very thoughtful and uh, very impactful too. So 
Yeah. Great job. Great job. Good job. Mm -hmm. I just love to see people doing things for seniors and getting them out into the community. And thank you for that. Yeah, I was going to reiterate the same point because, you know, we see things happening with uh, a lot of other groups. But, uh, you know, I was at, uh, was facility director at uh, Golden Pond for several years. And um, it's great that, that when young people come in, it really lights up the place. So really, thank you very much for doing that one. You know, I think it's incredible. Um, when I was growing up, i will share a little story with you. When I was growing up, my dad, uh, he was a doctor. And uh, he would work all day. And then he, at night, he would volunteer at the nursing homes. And he would go around, and he always encouraged us to go with him. He said, these people just want company. They just want someone to talk to. And uh, I regret not taking his advice, but my daughter did. <laughs> so I think it's, I think it's wonderful that, uh, that you've taken this initiative. And uh, it's, it's, it's beautiful. Congratulations. I think the, the award is uh, it's just a small cherry for what you've actually done. Yeah, so I'll piggyback off of those. I, I work in that industry with the elderly. I, I manage a dementia unit, and I tell the same five jokes every single day. They laugh like they've never heard it, but it's such an uplifting experience, not just for the recipient, but for me. It's a good ego boost for me, uh, but it really does make a, a big difference in someone's life when you, can, when, you can, uh, when you can see the results, the instant results that you get from helping out uh, anybody, but uh, for me, more in particular, the... Uh, the age population, um, you know, it's uh, it really it's very re rewarding, and I'm sure that you found the same. So, thank you guys very much for uh, for everything that you've done. Congratulations! It's a wonderful honor that you guys have achieved, and um, we're going to do some Eagle Scouts here, and then when we're done, we have some proclamations for everybody, and we'll do some photos at the end. Okay, if you guys don't mind, st uh, sit and put. Thank you. No, back there. <laughs> All right, so now we're going to move on to the Boy Scouts. Uh, Patrick Barnes, John Jack Riley, and Ethan Kramer of Troop 4, who have achieved the rank of Eagle Scout. Um, so we will start with Patrick Barnes. Good evening, Mr. Barnes. How are you? I'm well, thank you. How are you? I'm great. It's good to see you. So me and Jack's Eagle project was we built a two-person soapbox derby car for an able-bodied driver and a um, autistic or anybody that can't race on their own that needs help. And I was inspired to do this because I have an autistic cousin and my mom works with the special ed students. And I've been, I race soapbox for eight years and I'd always see the cars at the races and they would be side by side and they'd go down the hill and when I proposed this idea to my dad he thought we should do a front and back and when we decided we wanted to do this I had mentioned it to Jack and he thought it was a cool idea so he hopped on it with me we both made our own and the project took a lot of time he has pictures yeah. it took us a little over a year uh, over 800 hours but in the end, they came out really well. Jack brought them to a race. The kids loved them. And they go to Massachusetts local soapbox derby organization, which is in Arlington. But anybody from around the state can go and race the cars. That's cool. That's awesome. That's great. Wow. It's incredible. All right, any uh, comments from the board? Let's start down with our friend. I think this is amazing. Uh, and when you talk about accomplishments, you guys can say, I'm with Elon Musk, I built a car. Right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is, it's, you know, when we talk about compassion and, you know, finding a need and, and trying to serve it, I mean, that's, this is spot on. This is exactly it. Mm -hmm. You know, you've, you know, you know someone who, who has a need and stepping forward and being able to come up with a solution, that's exactly why this, uh, this is gonna go with you for the rest of your life. Congratulations, I think it's fabulous, great job. Thank you. John? Yeah, this is, you know, this is not just the um, Eagle Scout going on, going on a resume, but that you, that you built something like that 
and and you know showing the compassion to something that that uh, another kid might not be able to feel is that the thrill of of flying down the road and 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 getting that it's just and to think of it to, that that it's something that somebody would really need that's just it's great it's it it it, it, it embodies everything that a uh, that a boy scout uh, is supposed to be great job Thank great you. job guys right so these are longer cars, you had to make it longer? Yes. And then you get more weight in there, right? So you get two bodies in there instead of one. Does that like help it go faster, I assume, or is it? A little know? bit, yeah. Regular soapbox derby cars, you have weights fixed in them. Got they it. They have to be a certain weight, but it definitely is heavier and longer than usual. Got it. And the main body of the car too is made out of wood, so that adds on the weight too. That's great. Versus what, fiberglass? Or? Yeah. yeah, the regular soapbox derby cars have like a plastic shell. So is anybody going to be a mechanical engineer in college and go work in the auto industry come, coming out of this project? No, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> so. As like someone said earlier, you guys can put this award on your resume and you could absolutely use it to go work at Ford or GM or something like that because the leaders that those plants, those companies are going to be very impressed as we are, as the community is, that you folks have achieved this stuff, you know, at such a young age, these high awards. That's really cool what you guys did. So congratulations. Well done. Thank nice you. Job. Well, I'm looking at these pictures and, and what really shows out to me is the smile on these kids' faces. I mean, you've done something for these kids that no, nobody else has done and, and it looks like they're really having a good time and appreciating it. So congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, so I've known this family for 20 or so years. Um, it's not a surprise to see Patrick here, uh, knowing his parents, knowing how they raised their kids. and. I love that it's a soapbox derby car. Uh, that's all this your father ever, ever, ever talked about. <laughs> so, it's the only time in speaking with your father for 20 years that you could get a full sentence out of the guy without it breaking up. Uh, he does a great job at it. It's like Mary Jo said, to see the smile on, the, on that guy's face mm -hmm. is awesome. Uh, congratulations. You should be very proud, but it's not surprising knowing, knowing you and knowing you since you were just a little kid. So uh, congratulations. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, so Jack, would you tell us a little bit? Of, well, I guess you've told us a little bit. It, it, was your pro, uh, project the same as Patrick's? Yeah, Patrick so you guys, you guys project. sisters did together? Yeah, everything project. together. Uh, yeah, it's a huge project. I'm yeah. not sure if Patrick really got into the details, but just like, it's 900 cuts of wood, 800 hours to make the thing. God. Oh, tons of time sunk into it. It took us almost a year and a half. And overall, we, seeing how it came out, seeing the kids' <coughs> reaction, we wouldn't take any of it back. Yeah. Well, there's a lot through it, too. Yeah. 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 So, <coughs> regardless of the project that you did, I mean, this project's awesome. And obviously, it's wowed all of us. The fact that all the work that you've done since Cub Scouts to get to here should not be overlooked, and it's not yeah. overlooked by us. So Huge. it's an awesome job, and, and congratulations to both of you guys. Yeah, one quick little question, if I make to the chair, you know, so what's happening with the car now? Is it going to, you know, can that car be, you know, at There's two cars? There's two cars. They each made a car. Oh, okay. So that what happens with the two cars? That, that you know, do they go to soapbox derby races so so they can use them for you know when you guys are in college and everything yep. else? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's great. That's great. And I would like to just. Note to Mr. Hur, sometimes um, just heavier things can go faster than the light. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're not recognized. Not when you're running. <laughs> <laughs> Good. So congratulations, guys. That's awesome. Um, so Ethan, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? I mean, about the project that you did and, and about yourself and anything else you want to talk about. Sure. Um, so my project, um, I went down to the respite center. Um, yeah, and I bought them some nice pressure treated wood uh, from Hopkins and Lumber, and I built them uh, picnic tables to uh, like not only replace to the w the ones that they had, but kind of just add on because um, the existing picnic tables they had in their uh, recreational area were kind of weather beaten and um, not as sturdily made. Um, so I wanted to give them something that would uh, last a while. So I. Uh, bought the wood from Hopkins and Lumber, uh, cut it with uh, friends of mine, and uh, like screwed uh, like the hole, like drilled the holes and uh, put the bolts in, and put it all together, and then uh, finished it with uh, 
uh, stain so that it would be more res resilient to the weather. And um, I also took a slide of theirs and uh, washed it and repainted it for them. Awesome. Mm -hmm. um, so I kind of, I decided to do my project at the respite center um, because uh, not only did I just always know that the people who work at the respite center um, put in countless hours and just extreme uh, effort to, you know, care for people who need um, like constant uh, sort of, uh, I don't know, attention or care. Yeah. Um, but also just um, the uh, Mr. Mark Polney, um, who also works at the Respite Center, um, he uh, goes to my church with me, and I've known him for years because he also helps out with religious ed. So I really wanted to uh, do something that he knew uh, specifically that the Respite Center would really appreciate. That's awesome. So again, I'll say, knowing your parents, it's not a surprise to see you up in front of us. Uh, <laughs> You know, it's it's a direct reflection of, of being brought up right and being brought up the, the the right way, and it's nice to see, like Mr. Hurst said, in, in this crazy political world out there, it's nice to see some people that are grounded that that uh, that do the right thing. So again, regardless of the project that you did, mm -hmm. congratulations on all the years and hours that you've done and all the badges that you've gotten getting you to this level, and uh, congratulations. Thank you. Uh, Mary Jo. Well, <laughs> I, I had a lot to do with Troop 1 years ago when, when my kids were in there. We had a, a lot of kids make uh, high ranks as Life Scout, but it was really difficult to get somebody to go all the way and become an Eagle Scout. And I really have to congratulate all your parents because I know that mo most cases they had to push a little and, and give you little nudges and keep you going. And they deserve congratulations also. But look at all those badges that you guys are wearing. I mean, you've done a lot of work to achieve this rank, and I very much congratulate you. Thank you. Awesome. Mr. Catino. Again, it's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a great accomplishment. It really is. You know, and, and you know, the three of you showing compassion for, for, for people that, um, uh, you know, don't, 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 wouldn't get a chance to go in the race and, 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 and showing compassion for people so that they can get outside and, and uh, enjoy a lunch or enjoy a picnic uh, on new picnic tables. You know, it, it's, it's, it's fabulous. You know, it, it's, it's more than just building a bridge that people can walk over. You're building bridges to, to, uh, to, to people. We can wrap this up. And it's just great. So congratulations. And good job. I just want to say congratulations. You did a fantastic job. I think um, you know you identified those in need. You identified a need, and you went out and did something about it. Um, so much of our lives are about making things easier for ourselves, and you, we don't realize this little things until we actually get something done for us. And I think that's something that you see. You know, if you've been able to identify it, the people who get to use it are the ones who are really going to be satisfied. So I think that, you know, that warm feeling in your heart, that's going to carry with you. But this achievement of being an Eagle Scout, that's going to carry with you for life. Congratulations. Mr. Hurt? I, I like the word Mr. Catino used, compassion. I mean, I think that's, it's great that we're using that term, that word, talking about what you guys are doing with your lives, that you recognize that compassion is a good thing, that it's something that's a, it's, it's something we should look for and recognize and, and, and practice, you know. I think it's a, a really uh, a great testament to, you know, to you guys and to your families uh, that you have that skill, you have that social uh, empathy, that, that social, uh, what's the sixth sense for social um, intelligence. You know, that's, that's the kind of stuff that helps people succeed in life. And you're demonstrating that at a very young, early age. Ethan, I remember you're the youngest of five, I believe. Six, yeah. um, I remember you when you were a tiny little guy. Uh, your mother had you all around town. She and I were on the board together, and you were in here sometimes as a tiny little guy. Now you're six foot ten with all those badges on. <laughs> um, it's really great to see you grow up and be so successful. And I'm sure you're going to have a lot more success going forward. Great job, great job. Yeah. And when you guys watch this on HCam later, when the camera's focused on you guys, try to focus when you're watching the show on HCAM on, online, 
behind you guys, the pride that, and, the, and the smiles that are coming out of your parents' faces. Uh, I know, you know, going through high school, not me, but there were some friends of mine that didn't always make their parents proud. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, uh, your mother called me the other it, day. It's, very, I'm, it's going to be very meaningful when you watch this. I'm sitting here watching you, but I'm watching your parents, you know, just gleam with pride. And uh, it's, it's well worth it. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be a great, uh, great watch for you guys to watch. So congratulations. Uh, we have proclamations for you, and we're going to take some quick photos. Uh, I do see that the time is 7.30. We have to open a public meeting. Um, Mr. Chair, I move that we open public posted, posted public hearing for the entertainment license for Western Nurseries. Second. Okay, and discussion. We're going to table that until we're, we're done with these we guys. The vote. We'll After we take a vote, of course. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay. Uh, so, Mr. Meza, we're going to table that for just a minute until we finish all this stuff. Okay? We're a little bit behind schedule, and I take no responsibility for that. <laughs> <laughs> They went that way. They're under the pillow. Yep. <laughs> Come on, Norman. Come on. Come on. Mr. Mezzet up, yes. and uh, Mr. Okay. Kamala, do you want to tell us a little bit something about here, since my uh, cheat sheet said I have something about LNG on this. Yes. <laughs> um, this, I believe, is the third year That's right. uh, of an event that is now becoming a significant um, feature uh, in the community. Um, when we received the application, we were very excited uh, to learn that uh, one more year we're going to have this event. <laughs> uh, so far, I think what I've heard from the town's permitting office is 100% support for your venture. Uh, the feedback from the community has been supportive. Uh, and most importantly, you continue to improve uh, every aspect of the project uh, over the years. And at this point, with the Chair's permission, I'll let you explain the details of the event. Okay. 
I think you've all received the packet that Peter yeah. prepared. He apologizes for not being here tonight. He had to go to an industry meeting in Chicago. I just yeah. talked to him about an hour ago. <clears throat> and <clears throat> Excuse me. I think that we're really excited about this now annual event because it brings together the town and a lot of our uh, friends and uh, customers and uh, supports an organization of the Jimmy Fund that's really significant. We've, um, last year, we raised about $8,000 on this event for the Jimmy Fund in addition to what we, what we generated during the other aspects of that, which was the marathon, Jimmy, I mean, I'm sorry, the Jimmy Fund walk. And um, we're looking forward to be doing at least that this year too. Last year we had about a total of about 800 people um, over the course of the seven, eight hours. It goes from 11 till seven. And um, at one time, Peter thought that we're probably in the 350 to 400 people range. So it's not, people come and go and uh, they're not all there at once. We've got, uh, we've talked with the police department and the fire department and I think we've got everything in order with them. We've arranged for parking. We've got about a dozen staff, maybe a few more who will be on hand. We've, we do have two police officers that uh, will be coming. We've got uh, arrangements for toilets, uh, uh, clean up all the things that, that we need to do in, in, in conjunction with this. Um, we're charging $10 admission in uh, advance and $15 on walk-ins. So far we, we have very few uh, uh, tickets sold because obviously we hadn't, we haven't gotten authorization to do this yet, but we expect that there will be more, a lot more. And um, we have four uh, bands who are gonna be there, I believe it's four. We have four food trucks, I'm sorry, three or four food trucks, I think we're confirming another one uh, this week. We have um, uh, two beverage uh, sellers who are tips, um, authorized, and it's it's going to be a, a really good event the whole the whole time. Um, <clears throat> the attendees will be getting a bracelet when they come in, and the tips um, staff will certify that they're 21 or over for one color bracelet. I think it's blue, and anyone under the age to consume alcohol will be given another color bracelet, I think it's red, and then children under 12 are free. And then all the service of alcohol will be done by the TIPS uh, authorized, uh, uh, qualified servers. Um, Good. Did I leave anything out? You didn't. Any questions? Good job without notes. That was nice. So. <laughs> Um, I'll turn to the board for questions. I'm pretty sure that, I mean, I, I personally have been to every event that you guys have had there from probably from when I was a ninth grader on. Um, and but we got, we'll talk about that later. So, um, does the board, does, does, no questions? All right, that's good. Uh, public, does the public have any questions? No. Nope. Seeing none? No. Nope. Uh, Mr. Harrow. I just came oh, come on up, come on up, you're not a shy guy. I just came to the sudden realization that this is the 50th anniversary of a very large concert that took place in upstate New York. Oh, good stuff. Theme. I'm not sure we're going to use that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure we're not. <laughs> Chair, I move to close the public hearing. Second. Okay, uh, any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed, abstentions carries. Mr. Chair, I move that the Board of Selectmen approve the temporary entertainment. What is it we're looking for? Yeah, three motions. 
three motions? Yeah. Do I have three motions? Yeah. Go ahead, John. You got okay. Go ahead. Yes. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to approve a single event entertainment license for live music amplification systems for Western Nurseries at 93 East Main Street for its third annual Blooms and Brews and Barbecue Festival on September 7, 2019 from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. outside in the Coliseum area located behind Western Nurseries. Second. Okay. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed, abstentions, it carries. Next. I further would like to make a motion to approve a temporary alcohol license for Western Nurseries, again at 93 East Main Street for its third annual, annual Blooms and Brews and Barbecue Festival. Second. Okay, any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed, abstentions, it carries. And to the chair, if I can make a third motion to approve a fee waiver for both license applications as all proceeds from this event will go directly to the Jimmy Fun Walk. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Abstentions. Hearing none. Carries. Thank you, Mr. Mezzet. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Hope Thank to see you all there. We'll be there. Yeah. Well, I'll be there. Thanks, Mike. I'll be there. It'll be nice. Right. Give this one an empty we'll all these things. Okay. That's it. We need to get this one. Moving on. Where it is? Yeah. I don't know. All right, so let's get backtrack a little bit and we will move to the consent agenda. Uh, select board will consider approving the 7 9 and the 7 29 19 select board meeting minutes. Uh, number two, senior center gifts. Select board will consider accepting two gifts to the senior center, a living room slash lobby furniture from Friends of Hopkins and Senior Citizens, and assorted supplies from Unibank. Uh, does anyone want to break those out? No? Okay. Uh, Mr. Catino? Yeah, I'd like to uh, make a motion to uh, approve the uh, consent agenda as uh, written. Second. Okay, any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Abstentions? It carries. Okay, school committee. Um, pursuant to the Town of Hopkins and Designer selection, the select board will consider delegating authority to the school committee to select an engineering firm for the middle school Hopkins, uh, Hopkins Elementary School roof project. Mr. Hur, I'm assuming this is something that you're going to move away from. Is this solar? Yeah. I don't it's believe this is oh, anything to do with solar. solar. Then you can stay. Yeah. Yeah, just. Uh, okay, guys. Dr. Cavano is. Hang on, let me ask a question. Yeah. So is there any potential for any solar going on these roofs or are these roofs being done because of solar? Okay, thank you. Then I will not be recusing myself. All right. Mr. Kamalu. I don't appreciate you trying to force me out. <laughs> I believe I see Dr. Kavanaugh is here to uh, introduce the request to the board. Okay. Dr. C. Mm -hmm. This gives me an opportunity to talk about the speaker system at the stadium. <laughs> Did you find the key? <laughs> so, thank you. Um, I have Mrs. Rob McKeer, who is our Director of Finance, and Mr. Person is here also, the Director of Building and Grounds, and Nancy Cavanaugh, the School Committee Vice Chair, are with us tonight. So I will let Mrs. Rothermick, um describe why we're here. Um, so we have put out um, an RFP for design engineering for the roof replacement at the Hopkins School and the middle school. Um, both are in need of replacement at this point in time. Um, according to the designer selection policy, the Board of Selectmen can delegate um, that authority to the school committee with certain thresholds. Um, so we will go over both thresholds that are within the, the, uh, the delegation um, the construction cost of under 500000 and the design fee of under 50000 We will exceed both of those thresholds. Um, <coughs> when we did a similar roof project for the high school and also partial of Hopkins, the designer fee was uh, 87000 and the roof replacement cost was about $1.1 to give you an idea of 
what the potential of the cost could be for this request. So we're looking to see if the board would entertain um, delegating that authority of the designer selection board to the school committee for this project. Well, the request before the board is procedural. Um, this is a project that is funded through a town meeting appropriation. Uh, the request is also consistent with other considerations or requests that have come before the board before okay. uh, and have received board approval. Uh, and f last but not least, um, although the thresholds are exceeded, uh, we do believe that this is a project that the school committee can manage. All right, so I did get an email today from Mina um, saying that uh, on the June 6th, the school committee voted unanimously on June 6th to proceed with the process uh, and that she was unable to attend. We know that the other Kavanaugh is here. Uh, so, uh, board members, any questions? How many square feet are we talking about? Roughly. Uh, for the middle school is about 160,000 square feet, and the Hawkins school is minus what they well, was replaced in, I think, 2016. I want to say it's um, roughly uh, 35 to 40 square So let's say it's 200,000 in total. Okay. okay. John? No, I'm good with this. Go for it. All set. Very good. All right, I'll, um, do, mm -hmm. oh, I'll entertain a motion. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to approve delegating authority to the school committee to select an engineering firm for the middle school and Hopkins Elementary School roof projects. Second. Okay, any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Abstentions? Carries, thank you very much. Thank you very much. All right. Thanks a lot. Uh, next is the Legacy Farms Host Community Agreement. And it looks like the board is deferring review of this matter to its next scheduled meeting. Is that correct, right. Mr. Kamala? Correct. All right. Yeah. Moving forward. Is there, is there, I'm sorry, I missed that. We'll is there a reason for that? Because the we, we, we do have to get that one done. Agreement so we're postponing? Okay. Yeah. postponing. Thank you. Um, so we will move on to the, let's see, looks like we're on the annual appointments by select board. Select board will make appointments to several boards and committees for various terms and will consider appointing certain officials. Uh, the board and committee appointments, the Upper Charles Trail Committee, Cynthia S. Thimer, Parks and Rec Commission designee, and the term will expire on 6-30, uh, 2021. Um, so do we have to vote on these individually, Mr. Kamala? There could be a standing motion to approve the applications. Uh, the reason being, uh, we have a single applicant for each vacancy. Okay. I move that as we go through the list of that, uh, applicants, once we decide on that one individual, that they be appointed to that particular position. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Abstentions? It carries. Good. So, Upper Charles Trail Committee, Cynthia S. Thimers from Parks and Rec designee, term expires 6 21 so the Parks and Rec did support her coming to this committee? Yeah, yes. she sent a letter of recommendation. Okay. Um, so, so we're good, right? So yeah. all in favor. Just all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Carries. Trail Coordination and Management Committee, Dave Paul, recommended by the Planning Board, term expiring 6.30 of 22. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Extensions? Good. Hopkins Historic District Commission, Melanie Smith at large, term expires 6.30 of 22. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Abstentions? It carries. Hopkins Historic District Commission, um, Ms. Nasrula, Muniza. Um, I believe we have someone stepping off the board. Yes. Very gingerly. Uh, very gingerly. <laughs> careful. <laughs> careful. Let's get a helmet on him. <laughs> Don't fall uh, down. <laughs> uh, is it Muniza? Yes. Okay. Munuza Nasrula, Board of Realtors nominee, term expires 6 30 of 22. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, abstentions? One. So let it show that it's a four to zero. Uh, <coughs> and that carries. Veterans Celebration Committee, James Mirabelli. Mirabli. Mirabli. Uh, term expires 6 30 of 22. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Extensions, it carries, and the Zoning Board of Appeals, Rhea McNamara, 
Associate term expires 6:30 of 22. Is this to a is this to a regular position, Mr. Kamala, or is this to an associate? Associate. Associate. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Abstentions? It carries. Thank you very much. Moving on. I do not. Aye. I have heard you. I have heard you speak. Nice to see you, Dave. Speak frequently. <laughs> Uh, so it is not quite eight o'clock, uh, but our, do we have everyone we need here for the Chamberlain Street Whalen Road subdivision? Yes, uh, can I say something? Yes, ma'am. We had one other, it was further down, but maybe we should do it along with these others to the Community Preservation Committee. Okay. Uh, Jim Chirelli, Chirello. Yep. Chirelli. Uh, yeah, and I have the letter, uh, from the Conservation Commission recommending him, so. Uh, hey, is he on the agenda, Mr. Kamala? I don't see him. He's not on the agenda. He came in my packet. He has not on the agenda. So we're gonna table that one, and okay. we will take it up at the next meeting if, uh, if appropriate. So if we're good with the local initiative program application for local action units, Chamberlain Whalen subdivision, we're good? Okay. Good evening. Kathy Sherry, REC Hopkinton. Right, so Kathy. just some quick background on this. So REC Hopkinton was approved for a 30 lot subdivision off of Chamberlain and Wayland Streets back in April of 2018. As part of that, we're required to provide three affordable units um, according to your FCD bylaw. So our special permit approved three, of, three units to be provided off site. So what we will be doing is purchasing market units in town and converting them into affordable units. The units will be regulated by the Department of Housing and Community Development through the local initiative program as local action units. So that's what you have in front of you tonight is our application at the program level um, to the state. So that application includes the marketing plan which addresses the deed restricted ownership of the units as well as the lottery that'll be held to identify and select the eligible buyers. We proposed a makeup of two single family homes with at least three bedrooms and one and a half to two bathrooms, and also one two bedroom, one and a half ba bathroom condo to accommodate buyers that are preferring a lower maintenance option, which I understand is fairly, um, a fairly high request from the affordable buyer. Um, the application was put together by an affordable housing consultant that we did hire out of the Sudbury Housing Trust, Liz Rust. Um, so we, we did hire some expertise to help us with this as well as help the town through this process since this is the first time that we are going through this with off-site units. Good. So once approved by you tonight, we would submit, if it's approved, we would submit it to the state for approval of the program. Once the state approves the program, then we would start to look for the market units in town and go, um, go through the process of then having the planning board as well as the state approve those specific addresses and homes that, that we've selected. Um, and then once the units are approved, we start the marketing process, the lottery, and eventually get to the actual purchase and sale with the affordable buyer. So our consultant wasn't able to be here tonight. I apologize. So I'll answer whatever questions I can. If there's something I can't answer, I'm happy to take it back to her and we can provide a written response back. All right, board members, any questions? Well, I, I just wanted to make sure that under the conditions mm -hmm. that were registered, um, one unit will be provided before you get occupancy of your 11th unit. A second unit will be provided before occupancy of the 21st and then the last one at the end of the project. We had just actually have a change to the special permit that was approved by the planning board where we'll be providing two units at the 21st occupancy. And that was, to, that was approved to allow us time because we have at least a nine to potentially 12 month process with the state in order to get the units approved. Mm -hmm. That so that was just changed and approved. It went into effect, I want to say, the end of June, beginning of July. So this is new to me, Mr. Kamala. Yeah. This process is new to me. I don't think in my 11 years I've ever been asked to vote on off-site housing for affordable when the developer is working on something. I'm not opposed to it. I just want to ask some questions about it because this is new. Yeah. Am I wrong in saying this is new to me? Um, 
at least based on the on my ten years here in the town, um, this may be the first time this yeah. has come before the yeah. board. Uh, I, I did speak with uh, Elaine Lazarus as well as the staff in the land use department. They did confirm that the units are off site, as was approved by the planning board. I was also interested, and this was inspired by a conversation I had with uh, uh, um, Member Mary Jo. I was interested in confirming that the, the, the units have actually been identified. It is my understanding that this has happened. That you, you, the actual units? You, you, no. Yes, that you know where you're going to. No, we, don't, we do not know that yet. Um, so, so until the, pro what, it, what happens is okay. this gets through at a program level. So we, through this application process, propose to the state to the, the DHCD that it's going to be three units, here's the makeup, two single family homes, one condo, here's the comparison to the market units, et cetera, and they have to approve the program itself. Once we get that approval, we don't want to go in and start to purchase units that may not fit in with ultimately what they approve at the program level. So once the state approves that program, then that's our trigger to go and actually really start looking and start making offers on particular houses, homes within the town, and then we submit those homes to the planning board for approval. Once they approve, we submit it to the state for approval, and then we purchase. So in other words, tonight you're asking the board to co-sign a preliminary application where you are expressing the concept. This is not the final application. It's the program level application, as I understand it. If you look at the components of the application, this is what is defining the, defining the Chamberlain Whalen, Whalen Affordable Program. Three units, here's the rough makeup. That, and that gets approved at the state level. Yeah. So that, and that's my understanding from working with our consultant. We have to submit this first, it has to be approved, and then we have to submit the individual units. And if I may complete the thought, I think what you're hearing perhaps from my questions and also questions coming from the board is that the board needs to have a comfort level mm -hmm. in what it is applying for. Correct. So that approval is going to come from the planning board and the, the principal planner, because that's the way our special permit is structured, so that when we have a potential home that we'd like to purchase and convert into an affordable unit, we have to have that approved and signed off by John, or that's the planning board representative. So if he signs off on it, that is, that's the approval process, it, and then it goes to the state for approval. Am I explaining that okay? It's, yeah. it's, it's, well, so it's still in my time here. I'm still asking true? questions. Yeah. I haven't yielded yet. Okay. So um, we have a process that we've gone through dozens of times. We're one of the fastest growing communities in the Huck and Memphis, Mass, as you know. And uh, affordable housing has always been a component of that process in most cases where there were tracts of, of land. Um, and then that affordable housing was scattered throughout those various developments that are scattered throughout the community. Mm -hmm. And the only, the first sort of concern I see or that's kind of bubbling up inside me at the moment is if we as a community start going out and saying, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna let everybody do affordable, we wanna do affordable, we wanna be an affordable community, it's tough sometimes, um, but we're gonna start picking where we're gonna put all the affordable units by doing off-site stuff then all of a sudden we might get a concentration of affordable units in one area of town and not get affordable distributed throughout the community. So I'm sure it's a very rigorous process. I mean, anytime you deal with the state to get anything approved, it's not simple. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure you're familiar with our planning board. Anytime you deal with our planning board, it's not a simple <laughs> process. And I'm sure they're going to go through a very rigorous process, you know, re review of this too. I, I'm not opposed to signing this general program application, which it sounds like it is. Hey, here's an idea, what do we think? But I am concerned that we're gonna set a precedent that I would be more suspect with two or three years down the road if we get two or three more of these applications like this. So I just wanna put that on the table. Um, but in general, I'd be, I'd be okay signing this because I think after this, the real work begins. If, if I, yes. Um, I, I want to confirm what Mr. Hare said. My understanding is that the planning board has delegated the authority
to enforce some criteria that it, uh, it laid out for the location of the units Correct. to the principal plan. Correct. That's laid so out they, in the, they, the they, conditions they, of our special permit. Yes. So the principal planner should hear at least one select person's concerns about uh -huh. concentrations. Yeah. And the primary criteria is the location. That is really what he's approving, approving in, in, to address your point. They don't want it all in one area. They want it spread out. They want it in appropriate locations and such. So that is really the primary um, approval criteria yeah. is the location. So. Yeah, I, I actually went to a couple of the planning board meetings where they were talking about this, and I spoke to Liz Rust about it, they, their, uh, their expert. And what she was saying is that if they, if they tend to, if they try to put the affordable units within uh, a neighborhood where, where the where the houses are very very expensive, then they actually have to put a. It sticks out. So if you're putting putting up uh, nine hundred thousand dollar houses and you have to in an affordable house, what's an affordable house now like? The the sale price is two sixty eight. Two sixty eight. It's going to look different. And then it, it ends up, it ends up. People just know that those are the affordables. And so you said, if you can, if you can put them in other places, it actually works out better for the community rather than having a neighborhood look like it. There's a there's a nine hundred thousand dollars, nine hundred thousand dollars, a two hundred eighty thousand dollars house. It would look, absolutely look a lot different within that neighborhood. So there's a development in town called Oliver Lane, down on the bottom of Wood Street, uh, on Wood Street Hill. And there's some affordable houses in there, and they are absolutely no different. I could not tell the right. eight hundred thousand dollar house from a hundred thousand dollar. That's house. the intent. Yeah. Exactly. That's the intent. Yeah. Right. yeah. Right. So I don't. I would think that if you were building million dollar houses in this neighborhood, and you had to make three of them affordable, you're still going to make that house to the same specs as all the other houses there. You're not going to have, you know. Catino's house, Catino's house, Catino's house, Catino's house, my house, Catino's house, Catino's house, um, which I'm just using that as a... So, so you have... I don't mean to put your house down. All two, oh yeah, I was going to say that, all two 80s <laughs> and yours. Um, could I just, could I say a couple of things just to address that? If we were to, now this was all, this was driven during the whole site plan application and the special permit review and such. So this is our directive right now, is to provide them off-unit, uh, off-site. Had we chosen or had we had that discussion about providing them within the, within the community or within the uh, subdivision, we, the bylaws actually would have allowed for us to kind of cluster them. We could have increased the number of houses within the development up to 35 sure. and to have three and then some of the setbacks and other requirements yeah. are, are lessened as a result yeah. of that. Some of the feedback we got on that was to Mr. Catino's point and uh, I believe it was Beth Malloy from the Housing Trust had pointed that out that it does become kind of cluster housing within mm -hmm. these developments and, and that's not what they're looking to achieve sure. either. Um, at this point, though, it is our directive. Our special permit says X. You go and deliver three off-site units. So that's what we're looking to act on at this point and to get moving on that. I just want to jump in here. You know, as, as liaison to the Affordable Housing uh, Committee, this is one of the things that we talked about is how do we, how do, you know, what, what are we going to do with all this, the, the money that we have and every developer that comes through, they want to pay the fee uh, and as opposed to, I mean, it's obviously subject to the planning board, whether they accept the fee or accept the, the, the additional housing, not the fee, but the payment in lieu payment. of. Um, and then you have the affordable the housing community with the uh, committee with all this cash, not knowing what to do with it. So one of the things we talked about was having developers find offsite housing and have it scattered throughout the town um, to address you know, the clustering of affordable units and having kind of the those people mentality. Um, so, so the idea was to kind of scatter it throughout the town. And um, I think this is, you know, I like that, Mr. you know, Mr. Mastriani wants to, uh, wants to pioneer this. The one question I had for you though, is why are we doing a condo? Why, why not just do three houses? It was really based on the recommendation of our consultant. Um, the houses are actually a harder sell with the affordable buyers because of the potential maintenance issues. Um, there's also longer term issues in that um, 
maintenance can become an issue for an affordable buyer. Um, the houses we purchase have to have at least a five to seven year life remaining on the major systems, roof, furnace, et cetera. But after that, it can become an issue if they're in a replacement mode. Um, so a lot of them don't want the maintenance. They want a condo fixed. They know what to expect. No major systems to replace. It's more financially manageable for them. So that's why we added that in. So. Okay. Um, have you kind of met with the uh, affordable housing community uh, committee? We've met with Beth Malloy several times. Okay. So we've had several, we had several preliminary meetings when we were kind of kicking off this application process to understand our role versus the town's role and who was doing what. So we had met with the chair of the planning board, Beth Malloy. Um, at the time, I believe she's chair now of the uh, Housing she's Trust. Right she's oh. right behind you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, and then Elaine and John as well. So. Okay. That's been the discussion. And so, Beth, so, I apologize. Do you want to add anything from our previous discussions um, or meetings? Once. Can you come up? Sure. I think I'd have to correct you. We, we met once um, with people from the planning board and yourself and Mr. Mastriani, and we haven't met since. Um, the agreement, as I understood it, was that it would be three houses. Um, I'm sure a condo would be a lot cheaper than but three, uh, three houses. Let's just go through the chair. Three homes. Um, so this is the very first time I heard a condo mentioned at all. Okay. That's what they want to do. So a couple things. Um, a condo is actually not cheaper. It's actually a higher expense to us if that's one of the concerns because it is a lower selling price. A condo can only go for. $200,000 or less, depending on the condo fee. So that really wasn't a consideration. Um, and also, we, were, we went through a lane for the review because we thought that there was some sort of a housing trust component that needed some sort of review. And we was told that the organization in place doesn't exist in town, that it's not that committee. So they were taken off, and we proceeded forward with, with Elaine and the board. So. so um you mentioned you met with Elaine and John. John who? Uh, John. Okay, am I going to pronounce his name? The principal planner, John Gelch. Gelch. <laughs> VT guy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. 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 So we've they've okay. reviewed it. Elaine has reviewed the application. She provided comments back to us, to which we incorporated in, um, and then she gave us our the approval basically and said it looked good to submit to the board. To, to submit to this board. board. To submit to your board. Does Elaine have a recommendation, Mr. Kamala, on this issue to the board for the board? Yes, um, I spoke with her. She has reviewed the application, and she is recommending that the board sign the application. Okay, yeah. Mr. Kamala, if we sign this, we're, are we locked into this um, concept where it has to be two houses and one condo? I believe so. Yes, you would be. Okay. If you want to revisit oh. that, excuse me, I, I, we're more than open to that. This is, mm -hmm. this is what we, we were getting from, this is what your affordable buyers want. And a unit doesn't become counted, does not, it's my understanding, doesn't become counted into the town's inventory until it's actually purchased and we close with the affordable buyer. So it's not only having affordable buyers, it's a buyer that wants your house. Um, so which was kind of an eye-opener to me. I didn't think that that's the way it worked, but as we've been going through this process and talking with more experts, we're finding that, okay, they'll come to the table, but if it's not the right house, if they think it's too expensive, if, you know, they, they won't take it, even if they're on the lottery list. So, yeah. you know, so that's, that was the advice we're getting from our consultants. Yes. If I may, who did you discuss the composition of the units with? Was it with the planning board, or was it at staff level? No, it was just, it, it was at staff level. It was Elaine and, and John primarily that we've reviewed that with. So I think based on what you're hearing from the board, it may be appropriate to settle back with the, the planning board and confirm that that, that would meet its intent, okay. uh, as, as well as that touch base with the Affordable Housing Trust um, to make sure that what you're proposing does meet the housing needs in town. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Could we get clarification on the, just so that we're clear on the housing trust, because originally, like I said, Elaine kind of took that off, so I'm not sure of the role and, and how that plays into this. So I just want to make sure as if we do take this back and go another round that I understand who we need to talk to and who we need pre-approval for before we come before this board again. I think there are two parts to the mm -hmm. to your question. Uh, clearly, I think because this is implementing the planning board's decision, mm -hmm. you'll need to speak with the planning board to make sure that they are on board with the program. Mm -hmm. Because this also has an affordable housing component, it is advisable to consult with entities in town that deal with affordable housing, and the Affordable Housing Trust is one such entity. I, I just have a, a little bit of a problem with this is the recorded uh, registry recorded document from the planning board on this project and you're already telling me under the conditions there's already a change there is from a, the 11th to the 21st for the occupancy permit I mean it, it says that and this is like recorded and it says the certificate of, of occupancy will be issued once the affordable unit is produced after the 11th unit is built then you said then it said and then the second occupancy will be issued after the 21st and then the last at the end and each one has that component to it that, that we have to have the affordable housing component before you get the certificate of occupancy um, for those units and now you're telling me, I mean, because this is a recorded document, now you're telling me you've already made a change with the planning board from the 11th to the to two units on the 22nd? What you're seeing is the recorded special permit from April of 2018. There is an amendment that was recorded, uh, I'm going to say June or July, I can't remember which, I don't think I have a copy of it with me, that does change the delivery of the units. So the first unit is to be delivered at the 21st occupancy, the second unit is to be delivered at the 21st occupancy, and the third at the, the 30th, 31st. Yeah, through the chair, if, if you know, if, if it just, if they just can't deliver it, you know, at, at the at the 11th unit, it doesn't make, it, it ends up being a moot point if the state does, doesn't approve, approve it. You know, it's even like what we're doing now, if, if, if if we're supposed to be faster than the state and we have all these questions and everything else, I, it I, takes 12 months. I just, I just wonder what our guarantee is that, that we get these wins. three units. That well, it doesn't get built and they don't get occupancies and then we don't get them. I, I, think, we're, I, I, think, I think we're beyond our scope right now at the, the, at the board mm -hmm. selectman or select board level. I think our job is to look at this applications, get the general, okay, let's go ahead and take a look at this concept for the town figured out the planning board and the building inspector and everybody else at the state is going to worry about all those details but it's the idea of whether we're going to sign this thing or not to get the ball rolling is really the question before us it sounds to me like there's a little bit of a disconnect between uh, the development and the affordable housing committee here in town and i'd like to see that sort of come together a little bit tighter and then you know the questions for the planning board we're going to let the planning board do their job it's I was on the planning board, I don't want to do that again, so I'll let them do that. Um, but I guess my sense is that we're not quite ready. I'm ready to say, yeah, I want to do this, I'm happy to do this, but I don't think we collectively are ready yet. So maybe we should table it, Mr. Chair, for a, yep. a meeting. We can talk about it again at the next meeting. Yep. Uh, and that gives you guys some time to sure. get together on this condo versus house thing. And then uh, maybe we can revisit at a future agenda. Is that some idea? That's Medical fine. Team? Yep, that's yep. fine. Smaller. Through the chair, do you? Yes. Through the chair. I just want to say I do, I do commend Mr. Mastriani for taking the initiative in this, pioneering this new project. I think it's it's fabulous that he's doing it for our community. Um, it's I don't think what you're hearing from the board is you know dissatisfaction. I think we just want to see things tightened up a little sure. bit. Sure, understandable. So, Mr. Thank you. Kimala, do Thank you have a motion to move into the next meeting? Or it's okay. Continue? Leave it as is now. Good. Move on to the next item. Good. Yeah. Thank Let's, you. Thanks Thank you. Yeah. All right. Town manager report. Yeah. Um, first is the Main Street Corridor Project. Main Street uh, Corridor Project. How did I skip that? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Town manager's report. Okay. Yeah. Um, 
today between uh, 3 p.m. and 7 p.m. we held the first um, open house event uh, to simply review the easements that are associated with the project. Uh, leading to today's uh, meeting or open house event, we sent letters to all the properties that are affected by the project. We also specifically identified 12, 14 and 16 Wood Street as properties that we had identified easements before. However, based on input that we received from the board as well as from the property owners, those properties are no longer requiring the town to acquire easements. The project will proceed as is, but without requiring easements from 12, 14, and 16 Wood Street. Have they been notified in writing? Yes. Okay. Very good. Okay. Uh, this hold on, hold on. on Main Street Quarter, before you move on, yeah. how many people attended that open house today? I, I, it was pretty busy. I left because I had to attend this meeting. Yeah. Um, we were... Uh, at any one point, we had, we had we had different stations. At any, at any one point, we had about three people at each uh, a, a station waiting to be served. Where was it held uh, again? Here in the basement. Uh, we we received very good questions. Uh, we received questions regarding uh, the extent of the easements, the process that will be followed, and also we received people who showed up uh, offering to donate their properties to the town for this work. And everybody now understands that these are temporary easements. Yeah. We have identified properties where permanent easements may be required, uh, and we are communicating that to the, to the property owners. So based on the first person that came up today for public comment, I'd like to be able to kind of have a sit down with that person, whether it's, it's me or us or whomever, and just kind of with some clear heads, figure it out and I mean, we're, we're not going to make everybody happy, I understand that, <clears throat> but it would be nice to kind of get everybody educated. And it looked like she had a, uh, a whole bunch of uh, information that she's, I, I've known her for a long time. She's a, she's a pit bull. She will continue to read and read and read and yeah. recite and come back at you. So I'd like to see what we can do about really putting a pronounced effort forth to, um, to uh, appease her. Yeah, we, we sent her a letter um, in inviting uh, um, her to a meeting. Uh, we're willing to go to her home. We're willing to go to her business. Um, we would like to answer her questions. Uh, I, I, I did understand from her co uh, comment that she believes we may have had some information at the time I met with her. I did not have that information. Let's just make sure one of us is yeah. there. Yep, I exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, at the end of the day, though, I, I mean... Uh, 17,500 people live in Hopkinton. Yep, agreed. And 17,400 people have said, fix downtown Hopkinton mm -hmm. in, in different ways at yep. different times. Or let's say it's 16,000, whatever. The majority of Hopkinton residents support this project and want it done now. In fact, they're mad it's not done yet. So we just got to keep figuring it out. But we also have to be very respectful of the process and the individuals. Mm -hmm. And we got to make sure no one's rights are, are abused. But you know, these types of projects will cause some angst. Yeah, we, we actually had uh, mass DOT representatives from the engineering side, the right of way. Uh, we also uh, invited the consultants to participate in the open house. The second open house will be on the 27th of August. Do the open house documents, sorry Mr. Chair, do the open house documents reflect the board's discussions that we're just going to stop this thing right at the top of Wood Street? And we're not going to go any further down Wood Street. Is that are the documents reflecting that now? The engineer drawings? Um, no, I think as I explained to the board, here's what we have heard from Must DOT: the changes that they asked for post the 25% design are driven by public safety and compliance with the ADA requirements. Okay. They hear the board's position. However, they would not adjust the design. However, they would also they were willing to make sure that the solution that we move forward does not impact the properties that I mentioned, uh, 12, 14, and 16 Wood Street. So the, eventually the plans will reflect that those properties are not going to be impacted. Eventually. That's what the plans show now, currently. Okay, that's so, so I'm confused. So the plans show that 12, 14, and um, 16 are going to be impacted slightly or not going to be impacted slightly? No. All the work 
that goes beyond the intersection will be performed within the public right of way. So you won't be there will be, will be no easements. need for easements. Okay. Yes. That's, that's what we need to get clarified, yep. and we, or we just need to get out there that people understand yep. where we get onto Wood Street, we're going to do some work, but it will all be within the right of way and no temporary easements will be required. Yeah. Obviously, I think there's still some confusion around that. Yes. Yeah. Um, there's one property right, I think, at the corner of West Main and I forget the street, just before the intersection, has a retaining wall. Uh, the property owner attended uh, this meeting today and um, her concerns are around the work that will be performed. Yes, uh, within the right of way, though requiring perhaps a five inch or 30, 32 square feet easement on her property. Uh, however, her viewpoint is that that work may impact the value of your house. Um, but that's something that we, we will look into. Okay. Yeah. West Main Street, where? Claflin? Right across from where the, where the trail is, by Center Trail? Right after, the next, the next left. Commonwealth? Yes. Yeah. Next left, going westward, westbound. Yeah. Um, Future Act, I think as you heard from, uh, any questions on Main Street? No okay, Future Act, as you heard from uh, uh, Lisa Whittemore, the Chair of the Board of Health, um, I am recommending that the Board uh, endorse and approve a resolution in support of the Futures Act Bill. Uh, here's why that is important for the town. The bill is currently written, will require reports to towns from a certified gas inspector that the new infrastructure that is proposed is free from defects, that the shuttle valves and gate boxes are accessible and working, and that the work has been completed according to state and federal regulations. Number two, we have had our um, encounters with the DPU. In fact, we're going to the DPU tomorrow morning. Um, the DPU will be required to send infrastructure plans uh, submitted by any gas company to each municipal municipality affected by the plan. And then thirdly, municipal municipalities will be permitted to file a complaint with the TPU against an electric or gas company for breach of franchise or DPU regulations, with DPU required to hold a public hearing and publish its opinion. Uh, I think with those three things in the bill, I firmly believe if, if this bill becomes an act, uh, becomes law, we will have more tools in our toolbox to handle some of the issues that we're dealing with relative to LNG. So with that, I'm requesting that the board approve a resolution in support of the Futures Bill. To make a motion to approve a resolution in support of the Future Act. Second. Okay, <coughs> further discussion, hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, abstain, carries. <coughs> Is it? Is it? Can you read that report? I think we really have to support this bill if they have a day on the hill or something because um, you know the lobbyists are going to, oh, yeah. the gas lobbyists are going to try to shoot this down. So we have to strongly support this bill. In, in fact, to that end, um, part of the reason I'm bringing this before the board is that uh, I, I understand now the bill is sitting in committee and we need a critical mass to push it out of committee yeah, through the process. Right. Yeah. Good. Okay, liaison reports. Mr. Nasrullah. Yes, ma'am. Tina. Nothing other than the, uh, went to the, uh, the uh, night out last week. That was a heck of a lot of fun. Yeah. Well attended. Well attended. Yeah. Mr. Hur. Very quiet summer. Good. Mr. Lafreniere. Well, um, <laughs> I didn't see too much of, of my committees, but um, being summertime, I did go to the police night out, and it was terrific. And we did, and I did work with Parks and Rec because some of the mothers were allowing the kids to play in the fountain during the band concerts, and I worked with them to get a temporary signs just for the concerts, and it worked last week beautifully. So that's all. Yes. And the concerts this year, by the way, have been really good. Good. Yes. Carrying it to a different audience, and uh, it's, they've been a delight. All right. 
I got nothing. So, um, future board agenda items. Mr. Herr? Mr. Kamalo, as we approach uh, April of 2020 and the uh, Boston Marathon being over and the shovels going in the ground for the corridor project, I think it's time now, and I know there's been more and more input, but I think it's time now that this agenda item be on our meeting every time we meet. Every meeting. This is a big project for the community. It's a big project for the town. It's a big project to get done. I just, whether you put it under town manager or you put it on a regular, I don't really care. But I think we really just need to start getting regular, I mean, like twice a month updates now. I mean, we're, we're basically getting ready to build this thing. So let's, you know, let's talk about it. Yeah, in, in fact, beginning town meeting, this item has been on the agenda in all meetings. Okay. Good. That's been our goal. We'll yeah. continue to do that. Great. Right. Thank you. And, and I'd, I'd like to uh, bring up, as I, as I used to, the uh, parking, because I want to make sure, I, if you can get us a, an update on, we, we approved at town meeting to look at uh, two parking scenarios and when those might get implemented to try and ease the, as I was at a, um, uh, a uh, chamber uh, 2030 meeting, and they were concerned that we uh, will start this project and, and may not have uh, any backup parking. So if we can get an update on, on what we're gonna be doing with those two things that we approved. And I'd like to bring up, I know that we do have one more meeting before, but uh, September 14th is Hopkin and Day coming up at the high school, so I wanna make sure that everybody is aware of that. Is that your birthday weekend? It, perhaps. <laughs> um, and yours too. So, oh, right. Um, I would like to make sure that we uh, get the message out there that, that uh, Hopkin and Day is coming. And everyone should go. Okay. Great. Okay. Motion to adjourn. Second. Any uh, further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, aye. 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 Those abstentions carries. Good night. Have a good night. Thank you. Have